Welcome to K-Drama School. I'm your host, Grace Jung, and class is now in session. She's a screenwriter perhaps most famous for writing Temptation of Wife, which came out in 2008, and she is frequently parodied for having ridiculous plot lines, extreme twists, and excessive tension on her programs. She's known for writing what's known as the makjang drama, and I've discussed this genre of K-drama before which is known for these kinds of qualities that are meant to suspend your belief. I used to say that makjang dramas have a queering element to their shows, and I'm still in agreement with this. Uh, What they queer, however, is the moral boundary between what is right and wrong. So the villain can easily transform into the hero, and the hero can easily shapeshift into the villain. And that's part of the fun of watching a makjang, in that there is really no lasting consistency when it comes to these characters and their moral compass. I could watch only the first season of Penthouse because the show is too exhausting for me to finish. Um, But the qualities of this show, I would say, reflect um, the ego's most base desires, like sexual thrill, affluence, decadence, status, and power. So the show is run on the drive of these characters pursuing these sorts of temptations and vices. It's also interesting to see an actress like Eugene in this show because she started out as a K-pop star for the SM group SES, and I'm impressed by Eugene's acting chops, genuinely. She's really great at like crying, she's great at uh, being seductive, she's great at being over the top. I think my favorite scene in the show is when Eugene runs over like a long row of desks and is like ready to kick down a school administrator. I thought that scene was insane and hilarious. Actress Kim Soyeon is also well known for her career, which started out about 20 years ago. She was in a show I discussed called All About Eve, where she also played an evil girl. Kim Soyeon's acting also impresses me greatly because she has great control of her facial expressions. My guest today is Joe Wong. He is the author of Not This Shit Again, A Comedian's Guide to Tackling Anti-Asian Racism. Joe made numerous appearances on American television, including Ellen, The Late Show with David Letterman, The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Joe also hosted the radio and TV correspondence dinner in 2010, and he hosts a television show called Is It True, which is uh, airing in China. Joe is a very kind soul. He is a very um, warm person, and a lot of the Asian American comedians in my generation look up to Joe as a mentor, and it was a real pleasure talking to him. So let's talk to Joe Wong. Good to see you. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, yeah, same here. How are you doing? I'm doing very good. Um, yeah. Where, where in China are you right now? Uh, right now I'm in uh, outskirts of Beijing. I just got back like two days ago. Wow. Yeah. So I I have a little bit of a jet lag, but you know I'm okay. So. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I know that like you kind of uh have like a dual career, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. You're a stand up here in the states, but you know you're also like a TV host in China, right? Yeah, yeah, but you know, uh, not a whole lot in America. <laughs> so, so basically, just uh, uh, stand-up comedy shows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you recently recorded a, a special, right? That's huge. Well, yeah, but we're not sure where to show it yet. We just kind of re- go ahead and uh, recorded it, and uh, my manager's still shopping around. So, <laughs> we'll see. I see. Uh, 
I yeah, see. because I don't think Netflix is、uh, taking any new specials anymore, right? Really? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. How interesting! How weird! Well, well, they could do it again, I guess. But、uh, they already ordered a lot of stuff. Plus,、uh, Netflix、uh, isn't doing very well financially, so、mm. it's、uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, changes internally. I'm、yeah. sure. I'm sure. You know, there's this、um, there's this academic. His name is、uh, Toby Miller, and、oh. he. Yeah, he's like a he's like a media studies scholar, and、um, he's been talking about how Netflix is this giant bubble for like,、uh, you know,、oh, really? years, years and years and years, just going on and on about how it, it's a huge bubble that's waiting to burst, and oh, <clears throat> finally did. But but I'm glad it lasted this long though, because at least it's.、Uh, yeah. Making stand-up comedy more popular for so many years, you know. Yeah, globally, so right. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's the thing. Like, I, I'll bet you know,、uh, China is similar to like South Korea and Japan and Taiwan、mm-hmm. and all these other Asian countries, and the stand-up comedy was probably not a form of live theater there up until. Well, in China,、mm-hmm. they they've never had Netflix, but I'm sure they download stuff in the dark web and whatnot and access it anyhow. But Watching American、mm-hmm. stand-up comedy, I'm sure, changed a lot of things, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, to be honest,、um, uh, in China, the Netflix really isn't a big presence here because people、right. don't have access to it. But still,、mm-hmm. people see clips from Netflix every once、mm-hmm. in a while. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.、Uh, there's this. There's this、uh, Icelandic、um, stand-up comedy troupe. I guess you can call them. It's like two of them are stand-up、uh-huh. comedians. Another one is like a musical co- comedian, and they toured China actually, performing、oh. English language stand-up comedy. Oh, and, before the I, pandemic, it was quite a thing. You know, like. Uh, a lot of comedians came. You know, Jim Gaffigan、yeah. came here like almost、mm-hmm. every year because、uh, his some of his kids are learning Chinese, so、ah. he basically comes to China do some sightseeing、uh, and then、uh, perform some shows.、Uh, yeah, and、uh, that, that's where I met him a couple of times here. Yeah. Oh, that's wild. What yeah, is like、yeah. the. Chinese like audience like in reaction to somebody like Gaffigan. Yeah,、uh, well, it was great. You know, the, he's he's just doing well everywhere. You know, <laughs> the guy. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah.、Um, yeah, but the, I have to say that the、uh, sense of humor is slightly different,、uh, even among English speaking crowds. Like here in China, you know, if I work out certain jokes, then I go to America, I have to try similar things again. Because、mm-hmm. just people live in different countries, even if, even if they're just American audiences,、yeah. they laugh at different things. You know, it's very bizarre. So, I mean, it, it's understandable. It's not that bizarre. I mean, <laughs>、uh, but it's、sure. just more difficult for me to use the same routine in both countries. I have to tweak it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, that's always like sort of the stand-up comedian's lot. It's like we're different from singers and musicians in that. Yeah, we're using our words and we're using references and context and tone and bodily、mm-hmm. movements and everything is so like it's like we gotta cater to that specific audience every time almost. Yeah, yeah, and the cadence is very important too. Uh, yes, and also、yeah. uh, the English crowd in China is very diverse internationally. It's not like in America; most of the audience members are Americans. But here,、sure. uh, there are like British people, South、mm-hmm. Africans, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Indians, Pakistanis, even like Iranians, Saudi Arabians. It's、right. it's really diverse, and、uh, it's kind of amazing to see. But also sometimes. I got I got this British woman just asking me, 
she was like, "Oh, what is the NRA?" I was like, "Wow, there's <laughs> they have no idea right. <laughs> because there's no gun culture the rest、yeah. of the world, so they have no idea <laughs> what was going on there." So <laughs> it's kind of pathetic, but then <laughs> right, right, it is. <clears throat> yeah, that's so interesting. Yeah, because you're also like you. A lot of your jokes are political, like they、mm-hmm. are.、Yeah. You know, like you're such a unique、uh, comedian. Like I mean, I guess every stand-up comic is, but you know, you're very unique.、Yeah. Like you're you're Chinese, but technically you're Korean, right? And <laughs> yeah, you're yes, right,、yeah. like ethnically you are Eth- Korean. Ethnically you said you're like, Korean, yeah. You said you're third generation, like Koreans living in China. Yeah, probably third generation. Like... Yeah.、Mm. Yeah,、That's、so, so I can speak some Korean, but not very、yeah. good because I know this podcast is called. K drama, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like very lightly about K dramas. It's just like a gimmick that I could use as a theme、mm-hmm. because I just happen to watch a lot of Korean dramas. But you know, when I interview、oh, my guests, like, we hardly talk about K dramas. But um, yeah, no, I think the show uh, uh what was that uh, Squid Game is hugely popular even in China. Uh, really, I did a show, yeah, in Nanchang, which is kind of a, a city in the middle of China. I went、wow. to the club. So when you get into it, there's a small bar where you can drink some stuff, and、uh-huh. on the wall, there's all the Squid Game symbols. You know, it's, it's pretty、wow. amazing. Yeah, because、yeah. the comedy clubs in China is so. Some of them are very well, you know, designed. You know, even in the、mm. in the. A resting area. People can, you know, have some seats and they can look at some stuff, the books and stuff, and then you go、oh. into the show. So, but others are just pretty, you know, <laughs> low cost. So <clears throat> that's wild. So I guess then,、yeah. when you're in China, a lot of your audience members would be expats, then, right? Oh yeah, lots of expats, and it's it's changing pretty quickly too. Uh, mostly、mm-hmm. because of the pandemic, a lot of the expats couldn't go back into China, so、oh. instead the audience members、uh, are become mostly Chinese who speak English well, or Chinese、oh. who studied ob- abroad. You know. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fascinating. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, but I think I that's. Just,、uh, mm-hmm. The stand-up is kind of a, a universal language now. You know, there, when I was、uh, doing a show in Australia,、mm-hmm. uh, the host was、uh, Charlie Pickering, and, and it turns out he was a stand-up comedian too. So, oh wow! If you have one comedian talking to another, it's very quickly to bond with them. You know, <laughs> it's really interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> For sure, for sure. No,、um, yeah. Like, kind of going back to your career as, I mean, you're you're a Chinese immigrant in the U.S.、Yeah. I guess. Did you move for your studies? Because I know you have a doctorate in、oh, yeah in some STEM、yeah. field. Was that the primary reason?、Uh, yeah, in biochemistry. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I'm not just at- STEM though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but at at what point did you sort of move into comedy? Like, wh- at what point、oh. in your, I don't know, in your lifetime when you were in the states? Yeah, so I got my degree and started working in the biotech industry.、Uh, mm-hmm. My first job was in Houston, <clears throat> Woodland,、mm-hmm. Texas, and then that company went under. So I moved to Boston, thinking there were more biotech companies there. But once、uh-huh. I'm in Boston, I'm like, okay, I want to try something new. So,、uh, I kind of uh, uh, explored a little bit, and then in the meantime,、uh, my job kind of leaves me dissatisfied in a lot of ways.、Uh, you know, I I like humor, but on the other hand, when I'm working, I'm very serious. You know, like right.、Um, I got the only patent. That company had for like years, but I never got promoted. It's always some white dudes,、oh. to fresh out of college, and make some PowerPoint, and then they got promoted as the managers. So they moved above me, and what was most shocking to me was、uh, we got this white dude, 
you know, if he calls me Jackie Chan, it's probably, you know, I, I can take it, you know, it's not too mm -hmm. bad. But then he calls this uh, uh, Indian woman a poo all the time. You oh, know, no. I could just see it, the tears in her eyes and we're like, oh man, this guy's horrible. We try to avoid yeah. him, you know, we're like, this guy's going to be get in trouble with HR sooner or later. Okay. And then two years later, he got promoted, you know, <laughs> so what the hell? So, uh, yeah. but I would always feel that maybe stand-up comedy is just more fair, you know, it's, it's fun. Mm -hmm. And also uh, people just judge you by uh, how well your jokes land, right? You know, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's less of uh, who you are or who you know. So, Sure. Well, that's so. So that's how I used to think. You know? uh, so that's how I gradually got into stand-up comedy in Boston. But I mean, yeah. it's interesting that you chose stand-up comedy specifically. I mean, like, what other outlets did you dabble in before you decided? And what it, what was it about stand-up comedy specifically that you said this is the one for me? Oh, because uh, I tried, you know, like uh, a little bit golfing, you know, uh, mm. living in Texas, I also tried to uh, you know, shoot some guns and stuff, but then it just never, <laughs> it just never lasts, you know, it's, I tried some, try a couple of times, then I kind of lost interest, but okay. with stand-up comedy, uh, this is something I always say to people, if you try something and you fail, but you still want to do it again, that might be your calling, you know, oh. and that's how I thought about stand-up comedy, even though... I kept failing, but I still, and like a couple of days later, I was like, okay, I need to get back up there again. So, right. Yeah, just, that's, that's kind of bold though. You know, I mean, golf is golf. Okay. Like it's very standard Asian sport. A lot of Asians do it, but it's yeah. pretty, it's pretty low key. It's not like a rigorous mm. sport by any means. And then gun shooting, there's some fire there. I mean, that's literal yeah. firepower. Yeah. And, you know, when you're Texas, you know, fucking go Texas. But uh, stand up, it's like, it's, it's a, it's such an interesting genre, like medium or it's art form, I suppose, because it yeah. has firepower, but verbally and, you know, you're solo too. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, like, yeah, yeah. There must have been something specific about that that made you feel a certain way, right? Especially yeah, in this yeah, it, in this light of injustice that you were kind of enshrouded in. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just uh, I just feel that it's challenging, and if I can mm -hmm. get it to work, it's more satisfying. I guess that's how I, I felt. See. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if a joke works, you know the. I just I love the feeling, you know. It just sustains me for a couple of days, you know. But of course, yeah. if the show bombs, then I would feel bad for a couple of days. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. There's no, there's no better feeling when it works, and no terrible feeling when it doesn't work. It's like oh yeah, I know. <laughs> I it's amazing. What, what, yeah, because one thing I do regret was uh, uh, not moving to LA or New York sooner. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Boston is a great comedy town, but uh, yeah. there just isn't enough uh, entertainment industry for me to get exposed to different things. Uh, sure. As a result, uh, once I had the opportunity um, and then I get to write my own show or doing this and that, I was like, oh no, I have no idea how to do that, you know? Oh, interesting. Yeah, because in New York or LA, you get exposed to these stuff sooner. Um, mm. But on the other hand, you know, at least I noticed in LA, there's more distraction, right? You, there's acting, there's, uh, you know, uh, writing and all, all this other stuff, you know, that could extract, distract you from, you know, from comedy, so. Yeah, I mean, distraction is one way to look at it. Another way to mm -hmm. look at it is it's just... Like, as a stand-up comedian, as you say, we kind of have to have a lot of ammo, like, ready to go. Mm -hmm. Kind of have, yeah. have some ideas in the bag ready to pull out once representation is like, okay, what do you have, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you sort of, I mean, you've done late night several mm -hmm. times, you know? You've yeah. even done, like, the, the correspondence dinner. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you have, like, 
quite a career in terms of stand up. It's an admirable career. You sort of hit these major milestones like doing Letterman mm-hmm. and Colbert and you know even yeah. with like Ellen DeGeneres and and you know to me like like White House. Like I mean that's mm-hmm. all of these are huge tremendous milestones that like any comic in the US would be just very envious to have. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. But yeah, like I think you're right. LA, especially LA, it does sort of put a fire under your hustle and mm-hmm. you know like everybody's sort of like thinking like oh i need to have a pilot ready to go like yeah. i need to have a screenplay or some idea ready to go and um yeah i think you're right the business culture does sort of like force one into that uh, but yeah. yeah a distraction is also <laughs> another it's also another way to look at it um mm-hmm. okay so maybe then is that why you're like more active in China then because the entertainment opportunities are greater there? Like how did how did that happen? Like you were doing well in yeah. the states and then you mm-hmm. end up in China and you're hosting TV shows there. Yeah, it was it was a long and a kind of sad story because uh, this was okay. before Fresh Off the Boat. Uh, we yeah. went to Hollywood and. Uh, I just got so many writers and producers say to my face, you know, they were like, oh, we can't have Asian family shows on TV. Oh, we're like, no. why? And they were like, oh, because Margaret Cho, Margaret Cho's show failed. I'm like, that's like 20 years ago. You know, mm-hmm. can you imagine saying to a white guy, I, I'm sorry, uh, we can't have white guys on CBS anymore because Matthew Perry's show got canceled. It just doesn't <laughs> happen. You know, just like, but they right. just say to my face without even a shred of gold toward realizing how racist that was. You know, it, yeah, it was horrendous. Even my manager apologized to me. He, you know, he was, mm-hmm. the, I had a white manager at the time. He was like, oh, Joe, I'm sorry, but this is not when, what America's like. I was like, okay, mm-hmm. this is not what America's like. This is what America is, okay? <laughs> I just see it uh-huh. happening in my face. And later yeah. on, you know, they... Uh, Around what year writer, was that? Around this was like time? 2010 to 2012 or 13. Okay, about 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then another writer wrote a show to pair me up with another uh, comedian. <clears throat> and then you know, they were like, oh, we don't want Asian sidekicks. And I was just like, that's the that's language they use at the time. It's not that uh, long time, not that long of a time ago. You know, it's just, it's crazy. Uh, yeah. And uh, but in the meantime, uh, I had a book published in China, so I was uh, promoting my book in China, and uh, yeah. uh, uh, some TV producers just came to my hotel. They were like, "Oh, I have this show. We're looking for a host. Uh, can you try it?" So mm-hmm. I was like, "Okay. So what time should we shoot the pilot?" They were like, uh, "What about Saturday?" Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, was it sounds Tuesday. very China. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a bit, the Chinese do things by the minute. You know, they're like, oh, yeah, oh yeah. okay. So I went in the studio and shot the pilot twice. Mm. So basically exactly the same material. We, we did it twice and yeah. uh, we sent it to uh, whoever's in charge. And then I flew back to America. And two weeks later, I got a call. They were like, okay. Uh, the pilot pass let's do it and oh. that's that's how it happens wow. it's like yeah just everything just happened within four days and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and also i just, i was like okay maybe i will you know it's a weekly show so i will do this for a couple of weeks they might just cancel it because most shows don't last you know i, I right. kind of right. I, I know this but then right and, and then it's almost nine years, you know, it just it keeps going. <laughs> you know, what's hilarious is like, yeah. you know, you, you were sort of, I mean, you had this sort of long meandering, like, career in stand-up in the U.S. Like, I mm-hmm. remember when, when you and I first met, like, you told me how you were still living in Boston, but you would get these mm-hmm. calls saying, like, they want to see you if maybe you might be good for letterman and then you mm-hmm. go in and then you do all your thing and then they don't call you back and you would have to dr- like ride the bus for five six hours back to boston all dejected and yeah. whatnot 
and you told me that you did this multiple times right mm -hmm. and then oh, yeah. you have this long meandering career uh you try to pitch these shows to hollywood they spit you out with these racist commentaries to your face leaving you feeling so broken up and it's like a decade and a half of this heartbreak although you have these major achievements throughout and then in china it's literally like within four days they're like yeah okay now you're gonna this is you now <laughs> like, yeah. you're gonna be doing this hosting thing now yeah <laughs> for nine for nine years and for however yeah. many years left to come you know? i don't know i don't know how long this is gonna last it's like any show you know you could go away anytime so um but the, yeah and uh but also, I did some preparation, though, because I started doing this show in China back in 2013, but I started to do uh, stand-up in Chinese since probably uh, 2010, 2011, uh, oh, wow. mostly because when I published the book, <clears throat> I had to do these tours in China, so I tried a couple of jokes, and uh -huh. uh, I just realized, oh, people here respond pretty well to, you know, even american style comedy and uh uh but those are the a com it's a combination of a lot of things uh for a while like american sitcoms are pretty popular a lot of people are watching like friends and the big yeah. bang theory yeah. they were huge you know all the students were watching it and um, mm -hmm. um <clears throat> and a lot of people also watched my stand-up comedy uh, at the White House Correspondent Correspondents Dinner, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they were like, "Oh, so Chinese people can do this too?" You know, <laughs> a lot of them started to have their own clubs mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, yeah. And uh, I tried to get some Chinese shows going in Boston, and mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning, they don't want to do it. They just feel that like Asian crowds don't drink. You know, they feel that they mm. might lose money or. Oh my God, they don't know Asians probably... at all. Oh, what? They don't know Asians at all. Asians love to drink. Yeah, but then, uh, but there's some truth to that because uh, especially the Chinese speaking crowd, mm. they drink in restaurants, but they don't drink in theaters. You know, it's. Uh... Oh, I guess I'm thinking Koreans because Koreans get shit faced all the time. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the Chinese, they usually drink in uh, restaurants. You, you have to have a lot of uh, delicious food for them to really drink. And it's, it's a different culture, I guess. But mm -hmm. then I just told the uh, theater people, I was like, okay, you can uh, raise the price a little bit to compensate for your alcohol sales. Then mm. we just try it once. And uh, it, it was sold out, you know, it was pretty quickly. Oh, wow. Yeah, so... So from that point on, I tried a couple of shows in America first, first to practice my set in Chinese. Mm -hmm. So then when I came to China to do the show, we still have a lot of jokes. But then there's no place to try them because there's, uh, at the time, there's only one comedy club in China, in Beijing, a city mm -hmm. of 23 million people. Wow. And they only have shows once, once a week or once a month. So Oh my God. Yeah, before I show, I have to go to either a college or call some company and just say, hey, you know, I'm in town, have your employees to this theater. I'm going to try some stuff. <laughs> oh. we, we did a lot of those in the beginning. <clears throat> yeah. Gradually, uh, kind of uh, uh, get the show started. And uh, mm -hmm. when I was touring China last year, I still uh, met a lot of comedians. They were like, oh, I first know about comedy is from your TV show, you know, even though, you know, at the time, a lot of people don't even know what stand up comedy is, you know, they just know, oh, mm -hmm. you can do it this way, you know, it's, it's, um, mm -hmm. it's, kind, of, it's kind of rewarding. I mean, uh, you can try uh, different things in America, but in America, I feel like I'm a comedian, but in China, I feel like I'm part of a movement, you know, because mm -hmm. this uh, new art form is getting so popular in China. It's it's just amazing because if yeah. Uh, yeah, it go to, you know, I, I would say that if you're a new comedian, China is probably the best place to develop. Hmm. Because it's so new, the competition is less fierce. And hmm. you can start making money, maybe six to 12 months into it, you know, 
a wow. lot of comedians are already touring. Uh, just they only have you know they done this for about a year, and then they're touring China, and making a good living and stuff. So, <clears throat> like Eng English language stand up, you mean? Oh, uh, uh, Chinese language. Chinese language, that's yeah, fascinating. Yeah. You know, when I went to、uh, South Korea in 2018,、mm -hmm. I was also、yeah. like, I was interviewing a lot of、uh, former variety show entertainers. Like, they were comedians, but you know, in, in South Korea, like variety show, like slapstick comedy, like sketch comedy,、mm -hmm. that's more of the thing on television.、Yeah. And these guys just didn't have any more shows because those shows got canceled. Part of the reason、oh. why those shows got canceled is because Netflix was now a part of South Korean. Uh, media ecosystem since 2016, and a lot of South、mm. Koreans were watching stand-up comedy, and they were getting into it. And you know, stand-up. If you compare stand-up's sort of rough humor to these like cheesy-ass sketch comedy slapstick jokes、mm -hmm. with like ha hammers and you know,、yeah. like make makeup and fake teeth and whatnot, it's just like、mm -hmm. night and day. And、yeah. you know, South Koreans are all about trend and whatever is hot and fashionable now,、mm -hmm. and they wanted to get in on American stand-up comedy. So in 2018,、mm -hmm. all these variety show comedians who got fired from those jobs or、mm -hmm. or laid off because those shows disappeared, they started getting into stand-up comedy, and from that, they started doing like TikTok videos, and some of them are pretty successful now in that sphere. But、mm -hmm. yeah, it's like a similar sort of thing that's happening, but. As a result of television and the and the cultural changes that were taking place in the in the country as a whole, rather than、mm -hmm. only like oh like stand up comedy seems to be a thing. It's like no stand up comedy is a thing. It always has been a thing technically, but it's、yeah. like it's more visible now because there's this cultural gap when it comes to comedy now. Because it used to、mm -hmm. be this television variety show thing, but now that's gone, and it's like,、mm. what are we gonna laugh at? Oh. Oh. Let's get into stand-up comedy, yeah. Oh, so,、mm. but in China the story is、uh, kind of different because、uh, China's dominant comedy forms are sketch, you know, just like a lot、mm -hmm. of slapstick, and、mm -hmm. another one is、uh, crosstalk. It's just like two people、oh. uh, making、ah. fun of each other. It, that's、yeah. the more traditional one.、Uh, it's been、yeah. like, at least over a hundred years. It's really、yeah. the dominant form. And that、mm -hmm. is why when I came to China, a lot of people just told me, "Yeah, stand-up comedy will never work," because、mm. in sketch comedy, people rely on slapstick. You know, people、yeah. fall, or you know, they people,、uh -huh. you know, imitating、uh, disabled people.、Uh, <laughs> in crosstalk,、yeah. they basically play with with words.、Um, sure. They just say some. Sometimes they will say things really fast, and people still、uh -huh. get a laugh. Yeah,、uh, but then stand-up comedy, they were like, "Oh, we have to think before we laugh." You know, it's never gonna work. But then,、mm -hmm. <clears throat> but you know, we, we just keep pushing it and doing、uh, live comedy shows as well as、uh, you know trying to get some shows online. But gradually,、yeah. uh, the urban youth crowd got into it. Yeah, yeah, they were like, "Okay, we got enough of this dumb comedy. I guess we try something new." Yeah, yeah. But truth be told, well, most people just want to be entertained. You know, they、yeah. they're like, "Okay, you know, just make me laugh. I don't care if you you <laughs> fall on、yeah. a piece of banana or you you write a funny line. Just make me laugh. I, I'm okay." Right. But right, right. but the thing is, uh, with uh, I don't know why in Chinese stand-up comedy. Most of the performers are highly educated. You know, they.、Uh, I think part of the reason is because this art form came from America or England、mm -hmm. or something. You you have to kind of understand English to get the gist of it, at least、mm. at least in, during the early times. But now、mm. there in, there's enough bulk of Chinese language stand-up comedy that some people don't even have to rely on. English stand up to understand what stand up comedy is.、So. Yeah, yeah. If you think about like this <coughs> crosstalk humor that you're talking about, this like duo、mm -hmm. banter thing,、um, yeah. I I know exactly this category of 
comedy you're talking about uh mm -hmm. before korea was split in two they used to have this as well uh in the early 1900s oh. and they called it mandam and um mandam. they they used to do it uh during the japanese colonial occupation and it was yeah. essentially it was essentially stand-up comedy uh but they would have sometimes it would be one person sometimes it would be two person but back then they called it mandam and they would have just one person go up there and just talk mm -hmm. shit for like mm. an hour in live theater. Mm. And a lot of the times it would be like this uh, word of dissent, especially criticizing the Japanese colonial government and, mm. you know, trying to sort of, there, w there was even a comedian who used to criticize like America's occupation, military occupation of Korea right after mm -hmm. its liberation from Japan. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, like, so, so I, I do know of this um, form of comedy that you speak of, but yeah, in, in Korea, they used to also have not just two people, but sometimes one people, sometimes three people. And it was very popular on oh. radio shows as well back then. Mm -hmm. um, so if you think about it, like this form of humor, this category of humor, the crosstalk or mandam or banter that we speak of, it can mm -hmm. be kind of tied to the overall history of how stand-up comedy is culturally in China. It, I wouldn't say mm -hmm. that stand-up comedy is brand new to asia i would say that it has yeah. a history but it was just an alternated version of what it is today so to yeah speak. Uh, but i think one big distinction is um <clears throat> at least in china we had crosstalk and also there's sometimes there's only one person on stage doing it oh uh, yeah yeah but then the thing is uh in those art forms a comedian is on stage playing somebody else you know and oh. at least you know he's he's doing a dumb guy or he's doing this uh greedy guy it's a character or like a character yeah thing. doing a character yeah or i'm or i'm just imitating a corrupt corrupt government official okay but then unlike stand-up comedy you go there and, and you talk about what you think you know so it's yeah it's quite different yeah <clears throat> yeah i suppose you know if we start um you know pulling hairs like yeah it'll yeah. the, the <laughs> yeah, differences are endless because i mean you know even with stand-up comedy like we're all we're kind of playing a version of ourselves and you know like if oh, you look yeah, at if you, if you look at dave Chappelle, i mean he's doing sketch by himself Right. Like, mm -hmm. you know, he he's playing a character and then his reaction to that character and then another witness's character. He's doing sketch comedy all alone, mm. essentially mm -hmm. for an hour. That's his wow. comedy time and time again. And so mm. for me, it's like, yeah, OK, like, you know, stand up comedians are very opinionated and we have our political yeah. and ideological, you know, like categories and values when it comes to what is the definition of stand-up comedy and every single comedian has their own definition but mm -hmm. it's like if i if i look at it from a broader perspective like as a, like a i don't know like a historian or as a cultural critic mm -hmm. then i see like okay that mandam and banter it's still yeah. a root it's still a root of what stand-up comedy is today and so yeah i mm -hmm. like that's that's always been my argument, I suppose. That was actually my argument in my in my doctoral dissertation, actually, saying that like stand-up comedy oh, really? is, not a, is not a new oh, to Korea. Oh, by the way, how's that coming now? Are you? <clears throat> it's done. I finished it last year. Yeah. Wow! Congratulations. And thanks, and I've been an unemployed <clears throat> professor ever since. You know, it's. Uh, <laughs> you know how that goes. Um, yeah. 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 It's it's funny, like but as the, soon as I finished it, like I Yeah, you know, I was like miserable and I was like, What the hell have I been doing? I felt like every decision I ever made in my life was a mistake and you know Uh huh. Um, yeah, it was a oh, lot we of have, that, we've but... all gone through those, you know. Yeah? That's how you felt too at the end yeah. of the thing? Oh yeah, but sometimes they're like, Oh no, what am I doing here? I probably shouldn't quit science or something. <laughs> <laughs> when things don't go well. <laughs> but I mean, I feel like with STEM STEM doctorates, there were always like jobs. That's the thing. There was always a job available for you guys, like in or outside of the university. Technically, you know? yeah, technically. But then technology changes too. 
you know, it, oh. you know, whatever you know, ten, twenty years ago is probably not the case anymore. It just moves sure. so fast. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. probably not as bad as uh, uh, entertainment, but mm -hmm. still, it, it changes quite quickly now. So. I've sort of like washed my hands of academia at this point, you know, like I oh, still really? have, yeah, I still have a few like academic papers that I've written mm -hmm. that I still submit to, you know, peer reviewed journals to see if I could get mm -hmm. it published, but I'm not writing anything new anymore when it comes to academic stuff, you know, like I'm writing regularly, but I'm writing just for myself now. And, you know, mm. like I'm trying to, I'm working on a book right now. There's like a literary mm -hmm. agent who's like sniffing around, you know, I'm doing that, like, um, I have a, a theatrical and commercial agent since as of like oh. December last year. So I'm trying to get that, you know, like get that thing moving. I'm very actively, very actively seeking, you know, comedy management right now, because mm -hmm. what I would like is to be on the road regularly. Like that's really all I want is just to be on the mm. road and work. Oh. So yeah, like, <clears throat> no, that's amazing. Thanks. Yeah, I think yeah. you have a very clear goal and just you just keep doing it, right? That's all you can do. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then, you know, fucking the universe just says like, All right, now now you're gonna be a, a, a TV host in China. It's gonna happen within four days and you're gonna commit nine <laughs> years of your life to it. <laughs> 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 it's it's cosmically hilarious, you know? It genuinely yeah. is. <laughs> And you know, even <laughs> yeah. the even the fact that like you know you're you're like you're this immigrant you're an immigrant and uh, you are so well versed in American politics to the point where you know you you do like late night you know constantly you do White House correspondence dinner I mean like that's that's hilarious like on a cosmic level I feel like right yeah well. I guess I'm just kind of interested in the area. Um, you know, I listen to the news and the read articles and stuff. You know, <clears throat> yeah. But yeah. Uh, but that's the thing because I don't think there's a big market for this though. They, mm. that's the, I don't know. The problem I feel doing stand up in America, if you're an Asian yeah. person, they yeah. only expect Asian jokes or yeah something related to your ethnicity your skin color you know if you talk uh -huh. about something else they kind of lose yeah. interest you know even you if you're so? not doing any eth ethnical material mm. ethnic material they still feel mm. that you're doing it you know? mm. so yeah that's the thing you know because uh i have probably three stand-up specials in china I, I, when i tour here mm. um I can't talk about anything, you know, people are okay with it. But in America, I just feel that my topic gets more and more narrow, <laughs> you know, it's, just, it's, it's really? bizarre. But maybe, maybe I'm wrong, you know, maybe I should explore more, but then, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, that that's your thing, that's your craft, and mm -hmm. you got to go with, like, mm -hmm. what your gut tells you. But, yeah, I don't know, like, me lately, like, the challenge for me since last year was to, like, get get further away from blue humor because I'm very good mm -hmm. at it. I'm very good at mm -hmm. like blue humor. Um, yeah. But, you know, like how can I do like long form storytelling of something that is not at all related to like, you know, cocks and balls and vaginas, you know, like mm -hmm. what can I do? And like lately that's been fun. And also, yeah, it's also been a challenge to like not fall back on typical Asian humor because you're right that stuff lands mm -hmm. quickly and easily because they mm -hmm. are looking at an Asian person and you're right yeah. subconsciously or consciously there is that cultural expectation however it's like it's up to me to determine what mm -hmm. I decide is going to be funny for these people mm -hmm. and if I don't feel like talking about it tonight I'm not going to talk about it tonight they're going to have to mm -hmm. deal with whatever is going to come out of my mouth and mm -hmm. there have been days where or nights where I just never talked about my ethnicity or my culture at all. Mm -hmm. And I still got laughs, but that's just a testament to how good those jokes were, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, oh, yeah. like yeah. I 
really I really had to think about it and I worked on it for years and years and years you know but it is it is I agree with you it is way harder I suppose to like get people to see past this and mm -hmm. see who I am actually underneath and that is mm -hmm. like I'm a com I'm a complicated human being and I have a very weird perspective on this thing yeah yeah, I, it is. I mean, I used to stay away from ethnic jokes, kind of on purpose. I'm like, oh, those are those jokes are too easy. Um, yeah, they are. But what I yeah, what I noticed is that uh, still, I got some white guys coming to my show. They're just say they're just saying on social media, even oh, I'm gonna uh, uh, hear some Asian jokes tonight. <laughs> I'm going to mm. Joe Wang's show. It's like okay, that's. So no matter what you do, they feel, oh, that's an Asian joke. You know, it's pretty interesting. Mm. Yeah. Even though I remember mm. one comedy club owner in Boston did this thing was uh, one night I didn't go there and they actually take turns to tell my joke on stage. And it still works. You no, know? it's just it's not just because I'm Asian. It's funny. But the perception is oh, I'm funny because I'm Asian. You know, it's like oh, whatever. Mm. So, um, yeah. Yeah, but then mm. I try to stay away from ethnic jokes for a while. But then I realized that uh, even though like we know a lot, a lot of Asian, we know quite a few Asian comedians in LA yeah. or New York or Boston. Uh -huh. But the for the rest of the country, there are still so few Asian voices that even some of the a lot of people don't even know what Asian stereotypes are. And a lot of people don't know anything about the the Chinese Exclusion Act, or they they have no idea, you know. So I'm thinking maybe we have to talk about this to get over this, you know. So it's it's a it's a struggle, I guess, you know, whether or not to do it. Kind of is, yeah. yeah. All, you know? And and it's unfortunate that that struggle or that assignment falls on our shoulders unfairly. Oh uh, yeah. When when in fact this was you know white supremacy's problem right and exactly yeah um but you know i, I but, still think that i'm sorry go ahead yeah, but i think still people consciously or subconsciously are trying to maintain this structure or this privilege thing though um i realized that uh, if you were an asian guy talking about racism it gets people very uncomfortable you know but if you're black or hispanic people accept it more i guess the reason is uh one is uh people just don't know asians that much another one mm -hmm. is uh they were like oh your asians are doing pretty well you know what are you talking about you know that's that's mm -hmm. the attitude mm-hmm so it's pretty it's a it's a tough sell if you want to talk about the real issues uh regarding asian american communities you know of course there are some rich asians but those are really tiny minorities because you know when i was yeah. in boston <clears throat> uh, for a couple of years in a row we have to do these fundraisers for low-income uh residents in chinatown just because mm -hmm. they can't even afford rent. Mm -hmm. um, we did this every year, I think. Uh, I did this a couple of years, uh, Ali Wong and Xing Wang and uh, Kobo, uh, Kevin Kataoka, we all performed in that show. So it's a, mm. it's a, it's a very complicated issue. You know? People yeah. look at the statistics, they were like, oh, uh, Asians' income are pretty high up there. But on the other hand, if you compare Asian neighborhood to surrounding neighborhoods, their income is actually lower because Asians tend to live in high income cities and that kind of brings their average up. So it's, yeah, yeah. but people don't quite know this stuff. And it's all, they always feel like even after the whole anti-Asian hate crime during the uh, pandemic, mm -hmm. there's still mm -hmm. people leaving comments like, oh, I'm glad finally someone is uh, knocking the Asians down a notch on their privilege. I was mm. like, what the hell are they talking about? When do I have privilege? But then that's mm. the perception. So 
Uh, I still still think there is meaning in talking about Asian issues and Asian mm-hmm. stereotypes, uh, mm-hmm. but maybe、yeah. in a better way or find a different angle. I guess.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if if you're talking about statistics, statistically speaking, Asian Americans、mm-hmm. are actually some of the most impoverished communities in the United States. Statistically、mm-hmm. speaking, these numbers are actually. Very much there,、um, and、uh, you know this whole rhetoric about Asians having privilege in America is a right wing rhetoric that is created to to create racial divide between Black, Brown, and Asian communities. I mean that's a deliberate、oh, yeah. right wing strategy rhetorically. So、uh, I I totally. Am in agreement with you that these are issues that don't get highlighted enough.、Mm-hmm. Um, but it's always like this question of: Am I being a comedian or am I being a lecturer? Right? Like I struggle、oh, yeah, with that、yeah. too on stage. It's like this is it's like this is something I know. This is something I'm aware of, and this is something I'm politically conscious of, and I am frustrated. And I have a microphone, and I feel like I can say something. But it's also like, is any of this funny? You know, is like also that difficult、yeah. question, and it's like, it's it is it is tough, I I think as Asian Americans because when it comes to like black comedy, you know, like and black stand up comedy has a long history in America, and it's always、mm-hmm. been <clears throat> about laughing at that, laughing at、mm-hmm. power. Laughing at the injustice, laughing at the oppression, laughing at the suffering—that has been、mm-hmm. the act. But when it comes、yeah. to Asian American issues, it's like for some reason, it's just not that easy of a transition, you know? Oh yeah.、Um, yeah, yeah I、uh, I realized this in LA because it's harder to do this in other cities, but. Unfortunately, LA has a fairly big Asian population. In、yeah. some of the smaller comedy shows, when I just talk about、uh, this, the misery, the miseries that、uh, Asian Americans have gone through,、mm-hmm. you know, the crowd just laugh at the misery part. You know, they don't even care if there's a joke, and it's just funny to them.、Uh, you know, sometimes I when I talk about um uh, those, uh, there were actually. Eight Chinese guys on the Titanic,、uh, mm. and one guy was、uh, surviving by floating on a piece of wood.、Mm. So basically, that character was played by Kate Winslet in the movie. <laughs> and、uh, I, I, just, I talk about this on stage, and and all the Asian people, they were just they just laughed. They were like, "Oh, that yeah, that's that's what happens." But then, yeah, if this is in front of a white crowd, people were horrified. They were like, "Oh no, should we laugh or not?" You know, that's that's、really? the yeah, that's the、uh-huh. uh, huge cultural difference. You know, you can you can appeal to the Asian crowd, but then、mm-hmm. Asian crowd is like less than five percent of the population. <laughs> so that's a、uh, it's always or- a struggle. Yeah. yeah, or or maybe you could make it more specific. Be like、mm-hmm. the people who laugh at that funny joke about you know a Chinese guy being played by Kate Winslet, which is a very good joke.、Mm-hmm. That's not an Asian crowd or a white crowd. That's your crowd, like、mm-hmm. that's、yeah. Joe Wong's audience. That's a person who understands Joe Wong's humor. You know, I feel like maybe that's another way that we can look at it. Like sometimes、mm-hmm. you know. Like I, I think up a joke and it's so clever and I love it and it's it makes me laugh. I know it's funny. I bring it to stage and then I'll hear like two people dying laughing and then the rest are、mm-hmm. silent or lukewarm.、Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those two people are my ride or die bitches for life. You know what I'm saying? It's like、mm-hmm. I count on those two people to be at my shows when I'm doing like bigger venues, stadiums, whatever. You know what I'm saying?、Mm-hmm. Like,、yeah. um, I, I I can't remember who said this, but they were basically like, yeah, like you want to hear, like, look out for that one guy or lady who's laughing really, really hard at what you just said, and imagine、mm-hmm. having like hundreds or thousands of that person who came just to hear your joke specifically, because they get you. Like, if they're、mm-hmm. laughing like that, 
you and that person have a connection because they're mm -hmm. getting you and your humor rather than is this like an Asian thing or a white thing? You know, I don't know if that's like mm. productively liberating, but it is for me. Yeah, but um, if you do this one club at a time, it's going to take a while. <laughs> I guess. Yes. Um, yeah, it does. It takes a lifetime. <laughs> it mm -hmm. takes <laughs> yeah. comedians a lifetime, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, yeah. Man. Yeah. Have you um have you read Ali Wong's book? Oh, I, I no, I haven't. Uh, maybe I, I should. It. I recommend it. I loved oh. it. I really loved her book. And um I want to talk about your book too. I mean, I know like you were all fired up at the time when you were writing it and you had this like deep political mm -hmm. urgency when you were writing it. Um what was like yeah. your process like what was your writing process like and what was like the end goal that you have for this book that you wrote? Oh, well, the writing process was, was very simple. It's basically just anger, you know. <laughs> uh, okay. I, okay. I kind of felt this anger since uh, 2018 when they put immigrant kids in cages. Yeah. I was just horrified. I was like, oh, no, this is not right. And then um, I did a set on Colbert, and I actually had a joke that kind of alluded to both uh, this fact and uh, gun violence, mm. that joke got the biggest laughs, and but then they cut the joke. I was like, oh, oh shit! And uh, I, I just wanted, really want to do something. And then, yeah, the pandemic came. I can't do live performances. I figure I just probably I should just write it. And sure. also, when I was writing the book, I am very aware of the fact that there were tons of books and newspaper and magazine articles talking about Asian American experience. Uh, yeah. But then they're really well written. I can just tell these writers are so well educated, you know, their writing is just perfect. But yeah. nobody gives a shit, you know, because nobody <laughs> actually reads and learns something from the books. And I'm like, I was I was like, totally, I was like, fuck it, you know, I'm just gonna mm. write whatever I want, you know. And I, I remember around the time, even there is some like Asians criticizing me publicly. They were like, "You're you have a PhD? How come you're using this type of language?" I was like, "Well, these cuss words are created for this purpose, you know, because nothing else works, you know." Mm -hmm. um, but that also is during Trump's uh, presidency. You know, there uh, there are a lot of problems that kind mm -hmm. of converge together. So I, that's yeah. my main motivation. And uh, mm -hmm. I just feel that, you know, Asia is kind, of, is kind of the new invisible man in the new age, you know, it's just you can just say whatever you want, but nobody gives a shit, you know, <laughs> that's the thing. But I figure, you know, but still, there's, that's the only way to go, you know, it's uh, uh, America, mostly recognizes uh, money and violence. Those are the two most efficient ways of getting your messages across. Uh, mm -hmm. But I don't think Asians have these two weapons. You know? So uh, the only thing we can do is uh, b basically just to have a more unified voice um, mm -hmm. and uh, just do and individually do whatever we can. And we're the smallest minority, but on the other hand, in absolute numbers, there's still like millions of us. So, uh, if everyone can make some noise, it's it's still it can be heard. So that's that's the main mm. point of the book. Mm. Yeah, I like that, and I like what you said about like what each you know Asian American can do individually. Like yeah. I mean, I think um, like people sometimes you have to do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of uh, all you can do. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of times, you know, if you're, I sometimes I just say to you know my white friends, you know, you go on the street, just imagine everyone you meet is different from you. How would you feel? You know, it's, it's very hard for a person to speak up when everyone else around you are white or, or black. You know, it's very hard to speak up, but. Even though you can't speak up, at least you 
just say something like, oh, that's not cool or something, they will realize, oh, this is not appropriate. If you don't say anything, they feel, oh, it's okay to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's very hard, even for comedians. Because mm -hmm. uh, I have a very similar experience as you. You know, sometimes I go to a comedy show, I just want to have a good time, you know. Yeah. I got some jokes written on to see if it works or not. Right. But then you go there, you know, some comedians are telling Asians eating dog jokes. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I could just let it slide, but then this person is going to say the same to other people, you know, what can you do? So then you have to say something about it. If you say something about it, they're like, you of all people should know, you know, you're a comedian, you know, <laughs> right. this speech or whatever. So yeah. it's, it's very hard. It's, it's, yeah. But then sometimes you just have to buy the bullet and do it. It's, it's just difficult. Mm. You know? Yeah. yeah. And I think, I think that's where the individual and what they can do comes in. It's like, as an individual, you always have a choice. You have a choice yeah. to do something in the moment or not do something. Either way, it's not right or wrong. You don't have to judge mm -hmm. oneself, right? We need to yeah. kind of liberate ourselves from that burden. It's like, mm -hmm. you don't, if you don't feel safe or comfortable enough in doing something or saying something, yeah. you don't need to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. But like, as an individual, it is our responsibility to make sure that we feel better right and yeah, i feel like yeah. the only way to do that is some form of expression you know whether it's like just writing it down to myself later or just mm -hmm. like calling a friend and just kind of debriefing or kind of decompressing from the moment or mm -hmm. finding an ally and just sort of like saying oh you know that was a little shitty but you know like my message was heard now we can go and laugh about it later i think mm -hmm. that component is so subtle yeah. it's a subtle small step but people forget it, they skip it, they don't take care of themselves. And then that's mm -hmm. when the chip on their shoulder grows bigger and bigger. And that's yeah. a person living in hell. I don't want that for anybody in the AAPI community mm -hmm. ever. And I feel like yeah. that part does need to be told. And I, I think that's why I like when you say, as an individual, what can you do? And it's like, mm -hmm. As an individual, it doesn't mean that you need to go on Twitter and be politically active and, you know, like, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean you need yeah. to go and be a fighter. As an individual, mm -hmm. it just means find your own freedom and peace of mind. Just do that. Like, that's really all a person can do, you know. And yeah, I think yeah. being mindfully aware of what an individual can do through the choices that they make to make themselves feel better when the mm -hmm. system is the way that it is i think that yeah. part is like really really important for for forms of like you know taking care of the self you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah and also i think i mentioned in my book you know like anti-racism is a language of its own it's uh because nobody teaches you how to do it at all um mm. you just have to gradually figure this out uh i remember I used to do comedy in Boston. I perform with uh, Baratunde a lot. Uh, he mm -hmm. is a host on like on PBS for some show now. I just remember when some white comedians make some comments about black people. It's uncomfortable, but as an Asian person, I'm not sure how offensive that is. But then mm -hmm. the way he deals with it is uh, sometimes he will just just shake his head. He's like ah 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 ah, and then people immediately understand what is what it's about. You know, you don't have to make a big thing out of it, uh, and then people kind of get it. So I think that's mm -hmm. another way to subtly deal with the stuff too. So I love that. <laughs> I really love yeah. that. You're right. Yeah. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. just like a matter of shaking your head and just you know opening your eyes a certain way and be like. Uh, oh cool. yeah uh, yeah it's exactly not, yeah not cool and then yeah. move on because uh, yeah if if you use that moment as an opportunity to get into a fight and make it a thing then yeah. i mean the the consequences of the emotional aftermath of having to deal mm -hmm. with that is far worse in a way but you're oh. right it could be that subtle just a head shake oh yeah you know yeah exactly that's something i'm, I'm not good at though because i have to <laughs> gradually learn 
I either not deal with it or just or just make make a mess out of it. You know, <laughs> just, just yeah. I get it though. I understand it though. Yeah. And you know, like again, I and and this is something you also say. It's like there's no right or wrong way of going about it. It's yeah. up to the individual, and ultimately, mm-hmm. like the end goal, it should be like, as your individual, how do you find peace for yourself? Like, mm-hmm. as long as we know how to get to that place, while being politically aware and politically conscious, but always prioritizing our own personal peace, then I think this collective action, so to speak, can be bigger. You know. Mm-hmm. And what's fucking hilarious, what's fucking hilarious is like, you know, fucking Buddhism, mindfulness, meditation, this all shit came from Asia, you know, and <laughs> yes. we have, we have fucking white people, you know, lecturing Americans about it nowadays, right? And it's just like, yeah, well, you know, my, like, this is from like our people and our ancestors, like, you know, like, why don't we just go back to listening to our ancestors again, and and, and get back to that, you know, finding our own peace, you know, because as you say, like this systemic oppression, it's going to be there and it's going to stay there, you know? And it's Mm -hmm. like, all I can do is just remain in my political awareness and always return to my own fucking peace. That's all I can do, you know? Whatever, you know, like I'm, I'm grateful to some of these white bitches, like doing their yoga for me in the morning. It's Uh all right. You know, like I, I watch Uh them. They are helpful. What what, it doesn't fucking matter in the end, you know? Um, oh <laughs> yeah but for some reason i couldn't get into meditation stuff though but what what i found helpful is uh i can sit next to some guy who does meditation and he tells me i did meditation then i feel better <laughs> that's cool it's, man it's i weird. love that yeah it's weird but it works you know because i remember i have a friend it's, like Dan yeah. Kong. He just yeah. tells me, oh, I did medication. It feels so good. So good. I'm just like, yeah. oh, I, I, immediately I feel calm too. It's like, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. No, it yeah. works because, you know, it's about vibrations, right? If he's in a calm uh, yeah, vibration yeah. and he transfers yeah, exactly. it onto you, then mm-hmm. that works. I love that. It's like you're, you're kind of getting, you're doing meditation by proxy. Yeah. By just like, uh, yeah, being exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Well, I, I mean, this was lovely, Joe, and I, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of your, your work as a comedian. I'm also a huge fan of you as a person, you know, like everybody oh. I ever talk to, they're always like, Joe is like the nicest person ever. I'm like, I agree. He is the nicest person ever. Oh, thank ever. you so much. <laughs> no. um, yeah. But, you know, you're also like a very, you know, accomplished comedian. I really admire your writing and your work process and all of that. So um, I'm really looking forward to your stand-up special. I'm sure it's going to come out on a platform that that's oh. visible to everybody and oh really i hope so too to it. yeah it was yeah. it was great seeing you doing comedy in la as well you know it's uh, always yeah. it's always nice and interesting and, and stimulating to uh, talk to you you know I, and i wish you the best on your uh, book and you know acting and so forth you know thank it's you a, so much yeah, yeah it's a it's a tough thing but then you know i'm sure eventually everyone can figure out a way to do this now because there's big enough a market. hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I mean, like, you know, you, you alone is just like a testament on how every comedian individually carves out their own path that makes it yeah. work for them. You know, it's just how it is. There's just no rule book when it comes to how a comedian makes their career. So yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you for your kind words. I appreciate it. 